Welcome, engineers, to 2.1.6, which is calculating forces in a truss. Buckle up, because without a doubt, what we are going to do right now is the single most difficult thing in all of principles of engineering, according to Mr. Hare. If you don't have the next few minutes, if you're not at the top of your game, set this video aside and come back to it when you are ready because this takes a lot of focus this takes a lot of ta like just grit because it's it's it takes a little while to do all of this and one slight misstep and it is game over so be ready be willing to run this whole race and know that it is not a sprint this is a long this is a marathon let's get going so what we're going to be ending up doing, fast forwarding to the end of this, I'm going to give you a, a, a truss. It's a triangle right here. And what we're going to end up doing today is I'm going to be able to tell you which of these, which of these members, A, A, B, B, D, B, C, D, C, D, A, I can, if you were to make this out of popsicle sticks, I could tell you which one would break just from the numbers that are here. Which one is... Some of these joints are what we are in what we call compression. They're being squeezed. Some of these members are being pulled, and that's called tension. And some of the members are in compression. Some of the members are in tension. We're going to be able to figure out exactly which members are being squeezed, which members are being pulled, and by how much. So you can figure out which one do I need to reinforce. Which one can I get away with it being really, really tiny? Like I can shave some weight, but then add that weight over here so you can make a very strong, very lean bridge. There's a saying in engineering, anybody can build a bridge, but only engineers build bridges that almost fail. All right, let's get going. I'll let you think about that for a second. Okay, so forces. Number one, a body being squeezed, that is compression. Squeezing on a body, and they label it red, just to kind of color code things. It looks like there, if you're squeezing it, that is compression. Let me... If you're pulling it, stretching it, that's called tension. Sometimes... Uh, card carrying nerds they call this rarefication if you've been through physics you've heard that word when we talk about sound waves and longitudinal waves that when you stretch it a rarefication it's another word for a stretch um, a rarefication uh, a truss uh, a truss is a bunch of members that are slender that you hook together with some means that you weld them together, you bolt them together, you nail them together, you glue them together. Um, but trusses, they're triangular in shape. A triangular shape is much more um, stable than a square because a square ha undergoes what's called racking. Like this parallelogram idea where things can slide back and forth, they call that a racking. So you put a, a diagonal member across. You throw a diagonal member. Come on. Get your racking. You put a diagonal member right here, and that will limit, and it will not allow that racking to happen. Simple truss. Uh, we've talked about these before, uh, different supports. Um, when it, a pin support right here, when you've got a pin, that's the triangle. It's got two forces. There's a force that supports it up and down and a force that supports it left and right. A roller only supports it up and down. It's allowed to roll left and right. So you've got these re what are called reaction forces. Again, that's a review. When we do trusses, there's a few assumptions. All the members are perfectly straight. In real life, they're not. A little bit of warping changes things. All loads are applied at the joints. It's not true. Some of the loads could be applied 
at the joint, in the middle, wherever. It takes calculus to do that. We're going to stay away from it. All joints are pinned and um, simply supported. All these joints are pinned and simply supported. Ooh, no, I'm not sorry, that's wrong. They're frictionless. Inside of every joint, when you put them together, there's no friction there. Um, each member has no weight, and we know that that is not true. Like uh, beams, um, two by fours, pieces of wood, they all weigh something, and the weight of themselves is, um, is happening. And then lastly, members can only experience tension or compression. In reality, you can twist something. They call that torsion. We're not going to be taking that into account. And you can shear. Shearing is when, imagine the tractor. You know how you put a pin that connects the tractor to the wagon? That pin is in shear because the top is being pulled back, the bottom is being pulled forwards, and that's called the shearing force. Like scissors, they shear uh, paper. So we are not dealing with shear either. Only tension and compression. So we're going to try to keep it simple not to go too complicated right away. So this um, gets talking. I'm going to skip over a lot of this. Um, for a, a bridge to be what's called statically determinant, meaning that you are able to solve it. Like sometimes these are unsolvable. Like you'll actually go to a computer and program these in. They are unsolvable sometimes. And it goes like this. The equation to figure out whether or not it's solvable is 2j equals m, uh, what is it, plus r. Where M is the number of members, so all those slender members that hook, and uh, J is the number of joints, all the spots where they intersect, and R is the reaction forces. So like if the pin, remember a pin has two reaction forces and a roller's got one reaction force. So we've got, uh, here's, a, here's a truss that doesn't work. This one's, if you actually programmed this into a computer, it would say error. There are, and the secret is there's two pins here. So you've got a reaction force and a reaction force. Reaction force, reaction force. So if I do the whole 2j equals m plus r, the joints, there are one, two, three, four joints. The members, there's one, two, three, four, five members. And the reaction forces, there are four reaction forces. One, two, three, four. So eight does not equal nine. And that's why we, we talk about simply supported. If this was simply supported over here, if this was just a roller, there would only be one. So then there would be three reaction forces. And now this is a solvable truss when you have it simply supported with a roller and a pin. So um, we are going to be using these equations here, the idea that in equilibrium, we're going to assume that our truss is stable and still. So when things are stable and still, the moments equal each other. The, the clockwise torques equal the counterclockwise torques. Um, everything pulling right equals everything pulling left. The X forces are equal to each other. And the up and down forces are equal to each other. Everything pulling down is going to equal everything pulling up. So your notes are going to have these. I'm not going to go over these just for time's sake. But these are Mr. Hare's um, steps to solving a truss. We're going to go over these, and then I'm going to end it today. Tomorrow, we're going to get into me putting these into uh, use here. So step one, when we're solving these uh, trusses, you're going to get a truss. You'll get a picture of it, so I want you to, to transfer that picture onto a piece of paper. Make it big. Do not, I mean, the top third of your paper. You know what I mean? So when you, when you, when you draw it over there, so here's, here's my, if I was going to draw it, I'd draw it like this. So I have some room at the bottom, plenty of room to do a lot of work, which we're going to do a lot of work. But make a master drawing.
Uh, find all the angles using sine, cosine. You know what I might do? I might get through the first of these. Um, I think I'm going to go through up to five. And that's where we'll stop at the end of today. Because this, this gets really long, and I want to just not overwhelm you. So let's let's do it. So make a master drawing. Find all the angles using sine and cosine. So here we go. Let's let's do that. So here's my picture. And what do I mean by find all of my angles using sine and cosine? Do you see how there's a couple of angles here that are unknown? We can use sine and cosine to find those. So that's our first order of business. If there's any unknown angles, let's find those. So uh, theta. We'll use the tangent. So we'll say the opposite over the adjacent. And we know both of those dimensions. So the tangent of theta 1 is the opposite, which is 4. This is 4 right here, over the adjacent, which is 3. So then I just roll over to my calculator, and I do the inverse tangent of 4 divided by 3. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So, second function, inverse tangent of 4 divided by 3. You get 53 degrees. So this angle, 53 degrees, which uh, that means that this angle is 37 degrees. Kind of by uh, complementary angles, they have to add up to 90. Okay, uh, now let's do this angle over here. We'll call it theta 2. Um, so theta 2, we'll use the tangent as well. It's the opposite, which is 4, divided by the adjacent, which is 7. So I'm going to go to my calculator again and go 4 divided by 7. Inverse tangent, 4 divided by 7. And I get 20, 30 degrees. It's okay to round. It's okay to round. which means that this is 60 degrees. So that is step one and step two for Mr. Hare's um, steps. We made a master drawing. Now we found all the angles using sine, cosine, and tangent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the reaction forces at the supports. So what do I mean by that? Go back to my little drawing here. I know this was 30. I don't think I need to know those angles for this. But I'm going to find these reaction forces. These forces right here, we did these in a previous, um, we, when we talked about moments. We're going to solve them the exact same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage a couple of things. Um, number one, all the forces in the left and right are equal to zero. So that means that this one right here, this equals zero because there's nothing else pulling left or right anywhere on this. So the, the reaction force A in the X is equal to zero. So there's check one. I found that reaction force. It's zero. I'm going to do my moments now. I'm going to add up all of the moments. So I'm going to pick a pivot. So I'm going to put my pivot right here. So this is a positive torque right here, 500 times 7. And then this is a negative torque right here. The force, which is our reaction force at A in the Y direction, times the distance. And that distance is 10. And that's going to be equal to zero. So this is 3,500. Move it to the other side. I get RAY times 10 equals negative 3,500. Um, oh, I, I, I made a quick mistake. I remember that this is a negative torque because it's, it's going this way. It's, negative, it's a negative torque. So this, sorry, this turns out to be this reaction force A and the Y turns out to be 350, a positive number. It's important. So here, we got part two done. 
we know that this is 350. Check. Now we can figure out this one because everything pulling up equals everything pulling down. So I've got a downward, an upward force of 350, a downward force of 500, and that's it. And I have a, an upward force here, reaction force C in the y direction, equals zero. So 350 minus 500 is negative 150. So the reaction force at C in the y direction is a positive 150. Check, check, and check. So there is steps one, two, and three. Find the reaction forces at the supports. I found one of them is 350 and one of them is 250. Last thing I'm going to do today with you guys is I'm going to break every joint into what I call a sub drawing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this joint right here, joint B, and I'm going to make a sub drawing. So here's joint B. B has got three forces acting on it. There's a force here, a force here, and a force here. So I'm going to draw those. Force here, force at A, B. Force here, force at B, D. Force here, force at B, C. And then I do it for this right here. Here's C. Here's joint C. This has uh, a bunch of forces. There's an upward force of 150 on it. There's this force, the force at B, C. And then there's a force here, force at C, D. Then we'll do this joint over here, A. There's an upward force on it of 350. There's a force right here, force of AB. And there's a force here, force of AD. And then my last joint, joint D. Ah, I wish I had a little bit more room here. I'll tell you what, I'll do joint D right here. There's a downward force of 500 on it. There's an upward force, DB. There's a right hand force, DC. And there's a left hand force, DA. Where are we going with this? We're going to pick out a simple joint. One of these joints, you look here. Since we know this is 350, that means that this has to be countering. So this force is actually pushing left and down, and it has to push down at 350. Has to, because the reaction um, right here, everything pulling up and down has to be equal. So where we're going, we're going to start chipping away at each one of these forces, and we'll figure this one out. Oh, it turns out this one's like 438. So once we know that one's 438, that means that this one's 438. And if you know this one, then you know that one. And if you know this one, then you then you can go right along this, and everything kind of is like a house of cards, and it goes down. But that's enough for today. We'll continue with this tomorrow, figuring out what each of these forces are.